you know, I've been hearing about Diana camera now for like well over a year. Diana this, Diana that, Diana. And I always wondered what it was. I found out it was a toy, a plastic camera. And uh, finally, my curiosity was piqued enough that I went on eBay.com and I bought a vintage Diana camera. I'm going to have to assume that this camera is from the 1960s uh, based upon the, the various... Um, Crazy images. Yeah, you know, it, it just, I mean, this looks like 60s vibe to you guys. Definitely. Yeah, maybe even 50s. Could be. Whoa. So I did my research on this camera because I was really curious what the score was with this camera. Where what did it come from? What is the score with this thing, man? You know, because, I mean, he, you hear, everything you hear now is Holga, 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 Holga. Yeah. But the Diana has a little cult following of its own. And these cameras are not cheap. These are basically giveaway plastic cameras, but now you, can, you can't yeah, find... Yeah, you find them in show bags, right? <laughs> You're lucky if you could find a camera like this for under $30 U.S. Now, according to the Wikipedia, the first Diana appeared during the early 1960s as an inexpensive box camera sold by the Great Wall Plastic Factory in Kowloon, Hong Kong. Most were exported to the United States and the U.K., hmm. and the uh, Diana was imported by the Power Sales Company of Willow Grove, Pennsylvania. During the 60s, uh, these were wholesaled, 144 cameras at about 50 cents U.S. per oh unit. God. And uh, they were used as giveaway items. What, like corporate giveaway items? Yeah, I think they were just in like Christmas gifts, uh, junk, you know, like do dollar stores. Mm. Uh, they didn't have dollar stores back then. It was a five and dime. <laughs> Thank you, John. Walmart, Dollar Trees, Target. Oh, I'm glad you asked, John, because it says, Most Diana cameras were given away or sold for nominal sums as novelty, prizes at fairs, Carnivals, hmm. product promotions, raffles, or other events. For a time, the camera was also regularly advertised for sale in various periodicals through mail order vendors. Hmm. So you win that at a corny. Yes. You pop a balloon. It's not going to surprise you guys that over time... Come out of my hand, get your camera. The development of inexpensive, higher quality consumer cameras, such as the Kodak Instamatics together with the declining popularity of roll film, the demand for the Diana, even as a novelty, began to disappear. Oh. Yep. Production of the Diana, its clones, close copies, and variants is believed to have stopped in the 1970s. And uh, then that was that. So I did some further research because I was in a bit of a conundrum. I... Uh, I know that there are new Dianas out. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, wait a minute. If, if, if these Dianas are ended in the 1970s, then how is it I still see Dianas popping up all over the place? So what to do, Dwayne? Yeah, how is it? What to do, Mike? Pick what up the it? phone, and I called Laura Nealon at Lomography.com. You actually called her up on the phone. Well, I called Lomography store in New York City, and I didn't know who to talk to, so I got to a directory. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like... To hear the directory, press one. So I pressed the employee directory, and Laura Nealon was in the directory. And it was great, because I'm like, oh, there you go. <laughs> I know her. Hey, what's going on? Hey, I got some Diana questions. What you doing? <laughs> exactly. Wait. Hey, I got a couple Diana quick, quick Diana questions for you. Exactly. I was like, Laura, this is Michael Rosso. We met at the PDN, do you remember? She's like, yes, I do. In 2007, the Lomography.com, mm -hmm. the, the Lomography Society, started making Dianas again. I'm kidding. They actually started physically making them. Yes. They didn't refurbish old ones. They actually made they new ones. They make brand new Dianas. Really? Yeah. It's called the Diana Plus or the Diana F Plus. Uh, some of them have like a two-pronged flash that takes AA batteries. That's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> so we're talking on the phone, and I'm like, well, um, you know, I'm going to be talking about the Diana. By the way, this is my Diana. I bought this on eBay.com. Mm-hmm. So I said to Laura, I'm like, Laura, um, would it be possible for you guys to send a, Dia a Diana over for us to give away? And she said, yeah. So we are giving away a, a Diana Plus. The Diana, by the way, takes uh, 120 film. For those of you who uh, don't know what 120 film is, I always assume, and then I should never assume, because, you know, not everyone knows what roll film is. This is what it looks like. 
uh, roll film is on a plastic core, and it is exactly what it sounds like, roll film. And if you, this is, uh, by the way, my test film that I use, and if you unroll it, you'll see that it's paper-backed. When I talk about paper-backed film, literally the film is paper-backed, and if you unroll it, you eventually get to, ah, there it is. There's the film. Now, on the back of the paper, it's paper-backed because here's all the numbers that you see when you shoot and you line up ah. the film in your camera. <coughs> and uh, one of these numbers will line up in one of your windows on the back of your camera. A lot of people are confused about roll film because they'll say, Well, I don't understand, Mike, because, you know, one camera, you get 12 exposures, and yet this other camera, I get eight exposures. Yeah, why is that? It has nothing to do with the film. It has to do with the... With the design of the camera. Design of the camera. Some cameras produce 6 by 45 centimeter images, right. too. They're called 645 right. cameras. So it is dependent upon the design of the camera. Nothing to do with the film. Right. Now, when I get a new camera in the mail from eBay.com, the first thing I want to know, especially with a camera that doesn't have a traditional lens, is the first thing I want to know is what is the f-stops available and what is the shutter speed? And thank goodness for the Internet, because these days uh, you can find most information on the Internet. Uh, the Holgas, by the way, I was uh, pleasantly surprised and happy that Holgas that you buy come with a sheet that actually tells you what the shutter speeds are and about what the uh, f-stops are on your lens. With this particular Diana, I found on the Internet that it's 1 45th of a second fixed shutter. I always do like a little cheat sheet for myself. I always do like a little piece of tape. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, I, got so many, I, I have so many cameras that, you know, you grab a camera to go, you kind of just want to know what the shutter speed is. Yeah. I do, at least. Mm -hmm. So, 1 45th of a second, I wrote it on the back of the camera on a piece of removable tape. And it turns out that, very much like the Holgas, the Diana has three choices of f-stop. You have f8, f11, or f16. And those are chosen on the front Mm -hmm. But to, to get to your f-stops, on the bottom you have a little lever, and it, you have a cloud, a cloud with sun behind it, and a uh, sun. And you could just switch this, and what it does is it puts a little... It takes all the guesswork out of it. It's the sun out. It Put it puts, on the uh, sun. It puts a little mask in your lens that, you know, so less light can get in. Interesting. And you have a choice of either shooting a picture, you know, at 1 45th of a second, or, or putting it on B for bulb, and that will leave, of course, leave your shutter open if you want to do a uh, time exposure or something, you know, fancy schmancy. Right. Uh, now, when you, uh, this is definitely not a spy camera because if you want to take a picture of someone and then forward, go ahead to your next frame. <laughs> a bit loud. A bit on the loud side. Uh, you could also, um, what I've done in the past, have some fun with it. Let's say you're indoors and you want to take a picture indoors with your, your Diana or Holga. You you put it on B for bulb, and uh, you just have like a flash. You know, there's no hot shoe here, so you just take your flash and you put it on B for bulb, and you keep your shutter open and you flash. Ah, look at that. Yeah, and that'll expose your frame. And uh, make some for some funky stuff in the background, too, if there's some lamps or stuff in the background. so Some blurring. Yeah, it's kind of a way to have fun. Now, we're giving away a modern Diana camera here on Film Photography Podcast, uh, courtesy of our good friends at Lomography.com. It was awful sporty of them to uh, send a camera over. And uh, it's a modern version of this, by the way. Uh, this camera, I believe, is from the 1960s or maybe early 70s. Um, and all you need to do is send an email to filmphotographypodcast at gmail.com. Yo.